Well, hello. Um, in this video, I'll show you guys how we keep fire ants in the lab for research purpose. This is our wearing facility. You know, all of these trays host a bunch of you know fire ant colonies. And one tray hosts one colony. Um, we, you can see we have like hundreds of colonies keeping here. So keeping the animal, um, like the most basic principle is to provide an environment that's close to their natural habitats. And a good thing about fire ants is that they're um, disturbance adapted, so they're not afraid of being disturbed. Meaning that if you manipulate them, you know, take them for behavioral experiments, they're not going to be too unhappy. And they grow very well in the lab. We keep them in a in a tray like this. I, this uh, tray is fluent on the side so that the ants cannot run out. But over time, um, the fluons will get degraded because the ants will keep, you know. Then we'll have to move them into a new tray. So we keep them in a, in a nest like this. It's essentially just a petri dish that has um, plaster at the bottom. Uh, the plaster is fused with dental powder, so it's stronger than a regular plaster. They want to live in soil, but we keep them in a picture just like this because it would be easier for us to um, manipulate the colony contents. And if we want to collect the queens or collect the pupae and other broods, we can take them easily. Depends on, depending on how big the colony is, you can give them more or less nest and give them a small nest or bigger one. And the key thing is to really adjust um, the living space. Like, if a colony is too small, you don't want to give them a big nest because they would feel stressed in a sense. Like the the, the space is too vast, they cannot. Um, they don't feel secure. And if the colony is getting bigger, obviously you give them a bigger nest or you add in another nest into the tray. Another very important thing is that water is always provided for a colony. Uh, we give them water tube like this. It's just you know a culture tube with cotton that's uh, plugged in. We also need to water the nest periodically. We water them twice a week so that the plaster remains moist and they remain happy. So about the temperature and humidity of this room, we keep them around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. And that's when the fire ant colony grows the fastest. We have two heaters that's heating up the room to maintain the temperature in here. But the room is not completely out isolated from the outside, so the temperature fluctuates a little bit. That doesn't, that's okay, it doesn't affect things too much. Now let's, uh, let's show you guys some colonies. All right. So, this is fire ant colony. The brood and the queen would be inside a nest, and then uh, you can take a look. You can zoom in a little bit. So the white, greenish kind of stuff is the pupae and the larvae. So these are the pu worker pupae, and the pinkish, uh, cute little stuff are the the larvae. And they're pink because we feed them grasshoppers and the grasshopper for whatever reason it's it's it's, it's reddish inside so they, they take in the pigment and where was the queen that's the queen Where's, that's there this would be a very healthy colony because it has a good amount of brood in it so the more larvae and pupae colony has the healthier it is and the happier the, the queen two main types of food one provides carbohydrates like it, it's a mix of baby food and uh, peanut butter and mashed potatoes and sugar it's very delicious and very sweet i've tasted it myself it's very good and we also give them a protein food which is a mix of dog food and um, tuna and salmon and salmon or also peanut butter, something like that. And we also give them insects. We now give them 
uh, rehydrated, dried grasshopper crickets. Uh, okay, this is how we water them. We simply just put water just directly on the nest, just like that. You don't need to give them too much so that it doesn't run out. Oh, it leaks out a little bit. That's fine. Okay, we just close it back up, open up the lid. And, oh, this is a prophetic colony. Because, okay, this colony is here. Um, so it's getting weaker, so I gave them to small culture to for them to like live inside because imagine if you are a small family you don't want to live in a vast open space like like a big nest like this so they would feel more secure if they have more structure inside a nest so um uh, the queen is running around right there okay so just open them up and put some water on her do that twice a week and that would keep the nest uh, moist and the ants happy. What we have here is a polygyne colony, meaning that they have multiple reproductive queens in a colony. In comparison to monogyne, where they only have a single reproductive queen, and our lab studies how this type of colony evolves, how they go from a single queen to multiple queen. So open it up, you would be able to see um, that one is a queen, that one, that one, that one also. So there are four or five-ish queens in here. And there are probably more in here, right? Uh, more queens that are there. Also, this is a healthy colony with a good number of larvae and, and pupae. The same stuff when you water them, just give them a little bit of water. Be careful not to smash the queen if they're running out of the nest. And put it back, close it back up, and then put it back. So over time, the ants would degrade the fluons and they would start climbing up and they would start to escape this, this tray. And before that happens, we want to you know, transfer the whole colony into a new tray. And then you just put everything to the new tray, the water tubes and the nest. Um, put the whole nest over. Also this nest. Over. So for the remaining ends, um, Oh, this is going to be intense. Uh, you just tap the whole thing down. Okay, and then dump it over. And also, uh, don't forget the label that you want to, you want to uh, put it onto the new one. Okay, and then put this back on a rack and then you will clean and wash this tray and then we flew on it for another colony to go in.